Hello, my name is Jenna Bosiger, and this time on Cryptic Cryptids, part two of my recent expeditions deep into the heart of the Southwest deserts in search of the giant geoglyph faces I discovered on Google Maps. So be sure you're subscribed and hit the like because I'm not done with this huge discovery. I have plans to go even further into more detailed scientific research, documenting and taking measurements of them. This time, I went on location with my new drone to film them up close from above and at ground level, which I will show at the end of this video because I was thinking about why it is that so many people aren't seeing the faces and only see erosion. And after being criticized for the same thing by more than three people, well, that's when I really have to ask myself why. And they're all coming from making videos about these giant desert faces. And the reoccurring criticism is that I have symptoms of parodelia that are so severe, I would have to be categorized as a delusional schizophrenic. So, after some consideration, I think I know why. It's perceptionism. Many people's brains are not able to perceive them and so they can't see them because vision is your eyes plus your brain equals vision. Say a million people could paint, could paint or draw the same photograph of the same apple and they would all turn out different. And the reason is because we all see things differently. It's our point of view and it's our brain's interpretation of what it sees and what it sees as relevant. So in order to help you see these better, I think it will help if you look at some references that you'll, your brain will have to refer to and that'll help you see them better. What we see is also based on what our brain knows to be true and important. So to know what you're looking at, the brain needs to have knowledge to combine with the eyes to translate into what you're seeing. And the brain also needs visual references to recognize what it considers important in order for our vision and sight and our recognition to occur. So I made this video with that in mind and to help people see the faces better by first looking at other giant geoglyphs in the Southwest desert that are federally recognized archeological sites made by an unknown prehistoric people an unknown length of time ago. Those are the facts. And so let's look at some of those. So you'll have, your brain will have reference to other geoglyphs in the area. And then after that, we'll move on to seeing the faces from Google Maps, then to seeing them from the drone and then on ground level, which is really an amazing thing if you know what you're looking at. So the first geoglyphs I learned about were the Blythe and Taglio giants, and I only learned about them like four or five years ago. I'm going to jump in right here. I'm not even going to give background because I want to stick to the topic here. So four or five years ago, I found the Blythe giant in Taglio geoglyphs. They are federally recognized archaeological protected sites, and they include three separate giant figures. Two of them are with an unidentified four-legged animal. One is with a snake. There's another smaller figure nearby and other ancient geoglyphs in the area that are not protected or acknowledged. Fishermen in Arizona. There's the El Tosco giant and it is also recognized and older than the Blythe giants. Much more simplistic, much more faded lines. And I believe I discovered why he is named El Tosco. It's a Spanish word for a man that is rough, crude, uncouth, with no social graces. 
And I think that he was named that because looking closer, he is a giant naked man with a male body part. The name does seem to fit him because he's standing very rigid and maybe in a more intimidating stance and posture than the other Blythe and Taglio giants nearby. There's a well-known snake near Chino, deep in the desert, but in person, I imagine this snake must be incredibly long, and therefore it's really quite amazing. The Ripley Geos are on the border of Arizona and California, and they look very old, federally recognized and protected, and it would take a long time to get to them. There's the quartzite figures, also recognized as being ancient. There are the Mojave twins. These don't look like twins to me. They're also federally recognized and protected. And this faint geoglyph somewhere nearby is not documented or protected, but clearly I think you can see also the relation that these are from the same people, kind of insect looking. After finding Topok Maze, I began searching the area on my own and I found this other group of twins. These twins are very hard to find and they have a fence around them. So I, and I, and since they do come up on the map, it's not easy to get them to come up on the map because the other Mojave twins come up. But if you look at these that are also identified as twins, you have to ask why because I don't see twins at all. If anything, I would see what look like enemies. Look at the shape of their bodies. I also found this giant nearby that looks like it's also the same shape and type of giant bodies you're seeing. And then there's the Cocapelli anthropomorphic figures and the giant six-toed footprint tech geoglyph and other, you know, what looks like a Kachina type creature, and that has a lot of significance to me, but I won't go there either. Staying on topic, if you look at the corner of this geoglyph, it also sort of has that giant body shape that's similar to the others. The biggest one of all is Topak Maze, also known as Mystic Maze. It's huge, federally recognized geoglyph, but our society, culture, government, people admit to the destruction of parts of the maze and some anthropomorphic geoglyph figures that uh, we don't even have documentation of. They didn't care. They did it openly. They did it deliberately. So keeping perceptionism in mind, consider that we as a culture, as citizens of the U.S. government, are from that same society and culture and government who carelessly destroyed these geos at Topak Maze. And so it only makes sense that our culture is not making a big deal of showing any of any interest in anything about early man in North America. That's just our culture that we come from. That's contributing, likely, to why we don't see them very clearly or show much interest because this is a big deal and mainstream is just, they don't see it. They don't even see how important it is. One more I wanna point out before we see my live drone footage of the faces are the Yuha geoglyphs also recognized federally. They may seem more simple and fainter and more difficult to see, but that makes them some of the oldest. I found two geoglyphs on my own that are, I believe, super old and connected with these. This one near Topak Maze, and this one out in the middle of nowhere in the desert, and it's very simple and it's huge, you know, I would love to go see it, both of them in person. I also found this geoglyph, but I don't believe it's as old as the other ones. It's more complex. The design is more complex. And I also went to see it on location. 
this last one I want to show is an image of a crop circle in a grass field I found while searching in Hemet. And so after you've seen all these images and you understand that I didn't come across these by chance or luck, I spend hours doing these searches. And this biggest find of all though, without a doubt, are the giant faces because I keep finding more. Okay, so this is one face that I found. It's kind of isolated and by itself. But you can clearly see the eyes. And I also got images of this face from the ground level. I am so excited to be here. This is probably the most excited I've ever been to be anywhere in my entire life. See the eyes? <laughs> oh, I'm so excited. It is so big, so beautiful. I am just in awe. And you know how old this is. Look at the lines. This is so ancient. This is so much older than the Blythe and Taglios. Oh my. I'm just, I, I'm, I, I'm speechless to be here and I found him I found him the faces in the desert which really gives you a good idea of how large this is because as you can see I can barely fit the two eyes into the video and I'm looking forward to going back and measuring the distances between the eyes and the size of the face because all of these faces are incredibly similar in shape and size. But if you don't know what you're looking for, you would never know that these were here. And this material, it's not, it's not a deposit of some sort of material. All of this has been scraped away from the ground and that's why it shows up as a lighter color. If you look at the lines on this, these would have to be so incredibly old. But what's strange too is there's sometimes a line of faces and they're almost on top of each other, practically on top of each other. This group I find very strange because these faces appear to have pointed ears and maybe even, they're very strange looking. The faces are all going in different directions too. But you can see them one after the other. It's really hard to tell how these were made, but they are incredibly old. Some of the faces look like they have either a dog snout or maybe some sort of mammoth nose or elephant trunk of some kind. But the faces themselves are almost identical. And these are two faces, one facing one direction, the other facing another direction and sort of like on top of each other. But it's really cool to see this in person because if you're able to recognize the faces, you can see that one is facing one way and the other is facing the other way. And the artistry behind these is really beautiful and really amazing. I'm going to do a better count, a more definite count, but I counted anywhere from 75 to 100 faces in this area alone. This is just one section where I found faces and I keep finding more in different parts of the desert. But they're huge in size. And it's really strange how they're made one on top of the other, one after the other, overlapping sometimes. This is a picture from Google Maps of the faces that I went to. And then this is the same faces with the drone up close and in, and in person. 
It really was amazing to be there. I think it's very important and I think it's a really big deal. I think this find is a really, really big deal. And I hope that others can recognize and see what I see. And I see these as very, very important archeological sites made by early man. And they're so fascinating. They're, they're really beautiful and artistically done. Hopefully you'll be better able to see them after this video because there's a lot more that I wanna show. And I definitely wanna get back out there to take some measurements and to better document them. This discovery is not over yet. So make sure you're subscribed, hit the like, the notifications, and leave any comments you may have because I plan to get back there to do some measurements and I also have more giant faces to show you that I have been discovering in different locations. So until next time, bye.